the process is the agency submits it, and then records management uh, reviews it, makes comments, as does Tennessee State Library and Archives, and the Comptroller's Audit Division. If there's any questions or uh, comments or suggested changes, the agency then has the opportunity to view those and respond. If they respond and they agree with the changes and they say, yes, we agree, then it comes, I look at those and make the notes uh, to say, the agency agreed to make these changes and whether or not I recommend it uh, to be approved and on the consent agenda. Then PRC staff looks at this um, about a week, a week and a half before the meeting and they give feedback on whether or not they agree that it should be on the consent agenda. If not, it gets moved to the regular agenda. So there's several checks to see um, that this belongs on the consent agenda that everyone agrees with the uh, any proposed changes. Okay. Mr. Weeks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Callahan, what about the statewide RDAs? Are they reviewed by all records officers? Do they all have the chance to comment or what? What we've done for the um, statewide RDAs is we've had um, now three town hall meetings. So we've put them together and then put them out there for the records officers to review as the PRC request we do last year. They give feedback and one of the reasons why we didn't have um, all these statewides on the November or February agenda was because we were still receiving feedback. We got that feedback. We then put it back out there for another meeting to see if everyone was still good with what was proposed. And then we put those on the uh, agenda so that, uh, and there's several that we've held back because there's still some ongoing discussion. So until we have those items clarified, we, we don't wanna push them forward too fast. Good question. What I, what I do want to make sure that people understand is that the you and records management, you and your staff, do not make a decision unilaterally that you're going to put on consent agenda. That is a, a very much a staff-driven process, like you mentioned with TSLA and audit. And certainly, um, as we're going to find in a moment, any any member of this body can also have something bumped off the off the consent agenda. So while while I mentioned that, items number 50 and 60 are going to be bumped off of the consent agenda and will be taken up separately along with the other regular agenda items. Okay. Any, any other items that we don't want to have on the consent agenda? Any other questions about that process? Um, if I can, I think you said this, but I want to reemphasize it, is that you're now, you're inviting state audit and TSLA to come and, and sit with your staff as well so all of you can review um, RDAs as they come through, correct? Yes, we have our weekly meeting on Thursday mornings and uh, audit and library and archives are invited. And if they uh, are unable to make it or if they have any questions, though, we'll make staff available to assist them. Okay, thank you. All right, well, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda with the exception of items 50 and 60. Properly moved, properly seconded. Any discussion? Hearing no, when I take a vote, all those in favor say aye. I was opposed to no. I don't consent agenda is approved. All right. Now let's go to RDAs for discussion. Uh, first one is RDA 11036, Veteran Internment Records for Tennessee Department of Veterans Affairs. Mr. Callahan. RDA 11036 is a request for a new RDA. Um, the agency responded with um, the reviewer comments. There was a, to clarify the disposition notes. Um, the cutoff is upon the death of the eligible veteran. And then the records uh, for the disposition it describes it as the records created bef um, before the BOSS system, which is the um, federal VA system, was implemented in 2000 will be kept in paper format after all information contained in the record is transmitted to U.S. Department of Veterans um, Affairs via the BOSS system. Paper original transferred to state records facility after cutoff and then sent to TSLA after retention period expires. Records generated electronically after this BOSS system was implemented in 2000 will be transmitted to USDVA via the BOSS system. 
records generated henceforth will be sent to State Library and Archives after retention period expires according to the disposition instructions and in the format best suited to TSLA's business practices at the time. All right, why is this not on consent? There was a question on why it was being kept 100 years in agency. Um, I spoke with the agency records officer and they were, um, they said because these were death and burial records, um, this was on Friday, I, I spoke to them to clarify, um, that was part of the reason why they had it for 100 years because of their concern about confidentiality. And Thank you. Any, any discussion? Mr. Weeks. Okay, after that 100 years in agency, it's then kept permanently. These yep. are not destroyed at the end of that 100 years. No, it's kept permanently at Tennessee State Library and Archives. Any other discussion? Chair, I entertain a motion to approve the RDA. That's properly moved. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? Hearing no, when I take a vote, all those in favor say aye. All those opposed say no. Arms approved. Next one is 11039. This is the RDA 11039 exam call or future database. It's for the Department of Financial Institutions. It is a request for a new RDA, and the record will be kept permanently in agency in uh, paper and or electronic format. The recommended approval um, of the RDA with changes um, from TSLA, they wanted it clarified that the agency will be keeping these uh, permanently. Um, they wanted it spelled out in um, electronic records in agency uh, permanently. The, the reason why, uh, speaking with the agency, they're keeping these is because this is their database where they track the, um, the reports, the applications, the examinations of these financial institutions. So this is a critical record for them, and it's not something they plan on ever cutting off, which is why they include in even the description that it's a, even a future database. Any questions, discussion? I'll move approval. Go ahead, Mr. Weeks. I apologize, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Callahan, you may not know the answer to this question, but it just bothers me a bit. Do we know how many agencies that we have delegated the responsibility for permanent retention of state records? As we are um, it's a good question, and as we're going through this RDA review process uh, that the PRC said last year, let's go through all of these, all 1,700. So as we go through them, right now we know that there are 78 uh, items marked permanent. There are 23 that are marked permanent in agency paper. There are 18 that are marked to be transferred over to State Library and Archives. There's another... Um, 37 that are either microfilm um, or electronic. It's 15 electronic permanent in agency and 22 uh, microfilm, paper than microfilm in agency. So as, as we're going through, we, we're asking the question of if the agency is keeping it permanent, permanently in agency, uh, what are their methods? My concern is a little bit with the um, the items that are marked permanent in agency and just paper format uh, because there's there's some tricks to um, how you maintain per paper permanently and um, acid-free storage and, and light conditions, temperature and humidity. So that's something as we go through we have to look at and say maybe the agency needs to change the RDA to make it microfilm or that it transfer over to the State Library and Archives. That's something though that Library and Archives needs to uh, whether it's electronic permanent with them or paper, uh, there's budgetary impact on that, and they have to be prepared, especially if there's a lot of these changing, and potentially we could have a lot of RDA. So that's something as we go forward um, and discover more, we need to make sure that Library and Archives is aware of it so that they can prepare adequately for this and that they're ready for it. Any further? Chair, entertain a motion to approve. I'll move it. Properly moved, properly seconded. 
Any further discussion? Hearing no one, I take a vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Items approved. All right, let's move on back here. We we'll bump a couple items off the agenda. Let's go to um, item number 50 on the consent agenda. It's ID number 1794. Yeah, Mr. Weeks. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, members of the commission. Thank you for your indulgence in learning a little bit more about these two. Mr. Callahan, could you just give us a brief overview of what SW03 and SW19 are, how they differ, and how they relate to RDA1280? Yes, sir. Statewide 3 is human resources employee information documents. And the reason why that this is being um, revised and we actually added uh, a little bit more information even in the title as well as in the abstract. We previously had just said HR documents, human resource documents, but the, the abstract was talking about these are personal locator information. So who does Mr. Callahan work for? Where is his desk? What's the contact numbers? Uh, who the supervisor is? What their contact numbers? That sort of information there was some confusion because some agencies were saying, well, this says human resource documents, the retention period is 75 years. So they wanted to, they were thinking maybe we should keep everything in agency for 75 years, trying to really follow the RDA by the, the letter as they were interpreting. But state policy was these documents were being sent over or the main HR file was being sent over to, to big DOHR. So that's why um, we, we created Statewide 19. And this was something working with the uh, Department of General Services originally, their HR division was asking, can we create an active employee RDA? And we looked at it and we said, yeah, and this would probably help if we made this a statewide. Statewide 19 goes through and we met with Department of Human Resources to go over what should be in this RDA in the abstract these are the active employee files that is being kept long term. These are um, the uh, request for personal actions, employment applications, um, any personal file audits. There's a, quite an extensive list. And that is something that when an employee separates, it is transferred over actually within a few weeks to Department of Human Resources. What they asked us was, we don't need the agency to hold on to it for an extremely long amount of time, but can you, we set it at, say, six months. And that way, it gives time for the agency to transmit everything over, for that transfer to be confirmed, and then it will fall under Department of Human Resources, RDA 1280. That RDA is the separated employment um, files. So. That is something that says 150 years. And those are the items that are kept um, a very long time. And that's something that we're going to actually, um, we've spoken with um, Department of Human Resources about going through their RDAs. They're, um, they're adding some personnel to uh, help with that. They've had um, Elizabeth Sneed, their long-term records officer, is retired uh, recently. And so... They're adding some folks in there, and they're going to update their RDAs to make sure that they're um, complete and up to the date. And so that's something we'll look at, whether that should be 75 years or 150. Does that clarify it for you, sir? Sure. Are they kept 75 or 150, or do we know? The RDA says 150 years. It says 75 paper, 75 microfilm. That's something I, I want to check and confirm with the agency to make sure that it's, it's clear. And if they're really only planning on keeping it 75 years, um, that we will make that adjustment. Because right now, I think that they, they have everything going back um, a very long term, I think. I believe, from what I've read and seen, that they have over 75 years. Um, I don't think we actually have the files going back completely 150 years to the Civil War. Um, I think there was some um, damage to property at the time. So 
the, uh, but they, they do have it going back quite a long time. So we'll, um, we'll confirm that and then revise their RDA accordingly. And if we need to make any adjustments on these, I'll, I'll let the uh, commission know. Well, is there any reason, I think you've asked some good questions. I don't know we have the answer, full answer to. Do you want to defer this one to the next meeting perhaps to get some rough clarification? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, for my own understanding, Mr. Callahan, SW3 and SW19 are statewide kept in the agency for either 10 years or six months, Correct. depending upon what the file is. Then 1280, which is not before us at this time, is kept for some unknown number of years, around 150 probably. At least 75, At least which 75. is the um, requirement. Uh, you are aware that inside SW03 and SW19, there is a disagreement that one says 75 years in record management director recommendations and the other says 150. I will make the uh, adjustment to the comment to clarify that. All right, Mr. Chairman, as 1280 is not before us, but the other two are, I would move that the PRC accept and approve SW03 as recommended, amended by staff. I've got no problem with it. All right. I'll second the motion. Any further discussion? Questions? All right, hearing no one, I take a vote. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. Items approved. Let's go back to item number 60 on the consent agenda, ID number 1863. Mr. Chairman, it's the six month version of SW03 and 1280. And I do move that the PRC accept with, as recommended, amended uh, records management staff with the understanding that the record, record director's comments be changed if necessary to reflect the proper retention of 1280. You've heard the motion. I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Anything to add, Kevin? Quit while you're ahead. Yes. All, right. All those in favor say aye. All those opposed say no. Items approved. Thank you very much. All right. So let's go back to number four on the agenda, records management update. Go ahead, Mr. Gellman. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, for RDA development, uh, the records management division continues to meet each week, and we are current to the week in our review process. Uh, we've had quite an increase in volume as we've gotten this um, going. As you can see, we've moved up from um, 40 items on last agenda to 62 this uh, meeting. So we have created, revised, or retired over 10% of the 1,700, it's now um, RDAs in the system. We started with 1,700, we have added 58, and we've uh, retired um, uh, quite a number. And we. We also went through the database and we saw that there were a number that had been retired previously but that had not been updated in the database and we've done so. So that we're up to date on that. Uh, records destruction, the application for destroying records at Richards & Richards is up to date. The, um, as we've discussed, items approved, RDAs approved by the, um, revisions or creations by the PRC are then run through and any boxes at Richards and Richards that have met the destruction period are then the agency is notified. And so accordingly, they have 60 days to act. And we've had um, very good, no one has hit that, uh, that zero hour. So we've had um, 713 boxes approved for destruction. There have been 127 delayed by the agency for, um, uh, for various reasons of having to do with uh, needing to check it, whether it be a litigation hold or an audit hold or just um, looking at it, um, that they need to keep it. There are also um, over 6,000 boxes currently being reviewed by the agencies um, as of right now. So there's a, a few more weeks on those. Once again, after we update the RDAs approved at this meeting, we will then run the report again in a couple of weeks and start that process over. So we'll, we'll continue to, to keep that up to date. In training classes, we have completed five of the classes over the last um, five months. 
we are conducting two, at least one, but usually two workshops a month for RDA's uh, development or if anyone needs help with uh, the destruction application. We also, if we don't have a class in a month, we have a town hall meeting or both, in which case we've been going over the statewides or any other issues that we feel the records officers need to be updated on. The, um, the other aspect that we're adding is in-agency training. Uh, we've gotten feedback from the agencies. We've asked them what do they want for in-agency for records coordinators or division personnel. Now we have that. Uh, we've tested it a couple of times, and so we're going to start doing that more and more with agencies as they request it. So if they need it for their divisions to be able to, to get a better hold on it, we'll provide that. And the records holding report is um, the web application that we installed last year is, is up and ready. And we'll, one of the classes we'll do in June is going to be on uh, just preparing people again for a records holding report. So we'll, we'll have that um, in July so that they are ready to then load it in. And we'll have your report um, sooner this year. Are there any other further questions? I think you have a... Um I shouldn't say a retirement coming, a, a, someone who is moving out on elsewhere, Nathan Caldwell, who's done a, a great job for you, I know. I know we're disappointed he is. Um, I can't say going to a greener pasture. He's going to different pastures. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yes. Um, Nathan was, um, was hired by the Department of Human Resources uh, for their legal division. I believe he's uh, going to be working quite a bit with their, their records uh, division as well to um, as their counsel for that. So uh, we're pleased uh, the work that Nathan has done. He's um, been a, a good asset and a great help to um, our division and excited for him to go over there and try to think of it that I'm not totally losing him, that he'll be available to help out with DOHR. And as we've discussed, there's some items we want to um, clarify with them. So. It's a great hire for DOHR, so Nathan, I appreciate your hard work and what you've done for Records Management Division and, and therefore the Public Records Commission, so thank you very much. Next item. I can flip back through this binder. Yeah, it's only if there's questions. In the old business. Uh, we do have time for public comments. We have that on the agenda. Anybody from the public have any comments they want to make? songs they want to sing. All right, any comments, questions from the members of the body? Mr. Weeks? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I just wanted to thank the members of the commission for their indulgence in SW3 and SW19, and thank the members of the public for being here, and we appreciate your participation. We appreciate your diligence and, and dedication. You have a very keen eye, Mr. Weeks, so we're fortunate to have your service. Um, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Properly moved by multiple seconds. Um, Without debate, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Those opposed say no. We stand adjourned. <laughs>